Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Game Fish Simple. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the top seven foods for your fry. So this is going to be a video basically, I'm going to list the seven main foods that you can feed your fry and I'm going to list them from number seven being the worst food to feed your fry to number one being the best food to feed your fry. So these are all going to be foods that will promote quick growth and I'm going to explain all the pros and cons that I know about all these foods. So make sure you stay around to the end of the video to get all the information and if you guys are new to the channel, I make heaps of aquarium related informational videos as well as a couple little entertaining ones. So if you're into that stuff, please consider subscribing. Now without out of the way, let's get started. So at number seven is banana worms slash micro worms. So this is a good food to feed your fry and that's for a few reasons. So it's a high protein food, it's a live food. So those make it all really, really good foods for your fry. They stay small, but now the con and the trick to this food is you need to find a culture. So you actually have to culture these by buying a culture kit and then you have to grow them up and it's kind of a trickier process than some of the other foods on this list. And you can get a lot of the same results with the foods on this list without having to use banana worms. So if I was gonna use banana worms or micro worms, it'd only be to feed smaller, smaller kind of fish and only if I didn't have any other options. So I've never done this before because there's just been no point. It's sort of higher risk because they can carry parasites into your aquarium. So it's not very common, but it can happen because they're not the other foods on this list. So that's number seven. Now number six, is the Daphnia slash Cyclops. So I've just kind of grouped these two together because they're pretty similar. These are good because they're high protein and they are a live food again. Now the cons with these guys is that they are a little bit bigger than the other things on this list. So sometimes fish can have a really hard time to eat them because they can't fit them in their mouth. So they're not a great food for when you start, when your fry are first born, but once your fry start to move on to that stage when they're becoming juveniles, they're a really good food because they're high protein. Now because these are both fresh water, they can carry parasites into your aquariums. The risk isn't high, but the risk is still there. So for that reason, they're also kind of not that great, but you can definitely use these guys if you want to vary up some stuff. So number five on this list is an interesting one that you guys can try, and this is egg yolk. So I've done this in the past and I've used it for guppies. Now, there's a few things that are good about egg yolks. First of all, they're full of fat and they're full of protein, so they're super nutritious. The other thing is everyone's kind of got them. So what happens is normally when you get fry, a lot of people will only use egg yolk because they get fry unexpectedly and they don't have anything else to feed them, and also because it's really, really small. So the way we do this is we boil an egg, we take the egg yolk, and then we mash it up with a bit of water and we put it in our aquarium. So a lot of fish can eat this because it's small and you can just really get it into a milky kind of mixture and the fish will be able to eat it. Now the cons with this is first of all it's egg and it's not really meant for fish but second of all this stuff really does dirty up the water real quick because it doesn't really have a long time to last in the water. So you got to do a lot more water changes. It's kind of a once-off thing. You can definitely feed it just to supplement and get a bit of variation in their diet to get them growing quicker but for all what I'm going to say it's not that great. So so at number four on the list is smashing the like button. No, I'm just joking but if you guys could do that it really helps out this video. But number four on the list is green water. So green water is water that's basically contaminated with algae and this isn't actually a bad thing. A lot of people think that algae is a bad thing. Algae Algae isn't really that bad of a thing at all. Algae is just bad because we look at it and it's not that great to look at because it's green and kind of looks yuck. Now, algae can be an indicator of there being too many nitrates in your aquarium. That's the only thing that algae is good for. But another thing that algae is good for is newborn fry, especially small fry. So in this back aquarium here, I've got a story for you guys. The reason lights are off is I've had massive algae bloom. It's been a huge problem. I know I run a fish YouTube channel and all that stuff. Comment whatever you want, but it's been a huge issue for me. But there are some angelfish fry in there and I have noticed these guys have grown up a tremendous amount in the past two weeks. Like it's ridiculous. I haven't even been feeding them as much as I have been with some other fish and they've been getting super big. So that's proof that this green water stuff does actually help a lot of fry. So everything in balance. So you kind of don't want to give too much green water. You kind of want just like the right amount, but this stuff is really good for newborn fry. So if you've got stuff like Danios or even like better fry, I think a really small corridor fry, this stuff will work really good. It's kind of hard to use, but it's really, really beneficial because obviously we don't want to make a whole aquarium green like the one I've got there, but if we can make an aquarium green and then dose it, it's up to you guys. But that's the fourth thing on this list. So we are into the final three and these are all going to be the breadwinners and the absolute pieces of gold that you need to grow your fish as quick as possible. So at number three is Infusoria. So Infusoria is little bacteria cultures that we can create by putting vegetables with a bit of boiling water and leaving them for a couple of days. You can get this cloudy water and this is awesome for feeding your fry. So I use this in my first ever batch of Danio fry and this is for a few reasons. So 
Danny and Fry have really small mouths and they can't fit in a lot of the foods that I was talking about. So this stuff works really well because it's a live food. It doesn't really dirty up the water too much. It's a live food so they all go after it, but it can fit in their mouth. So it's a really awesome food if you just start them out. You only need to feed it for a week or so and they'll be up to size where they can take brine shrimp and all that kind of stuff. So that's the third food on this list. Now, number two on the list is the commercial food. So we're talking stuff like, I'm not sponsored or anything, but first bites, so curry first bites or crushed flakes into powder. You have to get the stuff real, real fine to fit in a lot of fish's mouths. But this is a really good food for a lot of reasons. So a lot of people already have flakes. So if you get some surprise fry, you can feed them this because you've already got it. So you just need to crush up the flakes into a powder. And then I recommend getting a chopstick and tapping it on top of the aquariums. It'll just disperse along the top of the aquarium. It'll fall down slowly. Super easy to feed. It's full of nutrition because it's already designed for fish. Especially hikari first bites. It's really good. I've been using it for a lot of fish. And it's just a good food to supplement in between feedings too. So I like to feed brine shrimp once a day, but then for the rest of the day I feed hikari first bites just to keep them full and keep them growing as quick as possible. And then of course a number one has to be the brine shrimp. I am in love with baby brine shrimp and this is for a few reasons. So it's not crazy difficult to hatch baby brine shrimp. They can be a little bit more expensive than other foods because they're just, that's just the way it is. But to hatch them all you need is a water bottle, an air pump and a light. Super easy, you only need to buy it once and it'll work forever. And you have to hatch these guys once a day. You can do batches on and off. But the reason these guys are so good is they're small. They're full of protein. They're super easy to feed. And fish absolutely love them because they bounce around the aquarium. So it's really attractive for the little fry to go and eat them. And they'll eat them and eat them and eat them until they are so full. It's not even funny. The best thing about these guys is because they're in brine, they're a saltwater crustacean, which means that they can't carry any pathogens over into your freshwater fish tank. So for that reason, it's really good because it's a no risk food that you can feed these guys. So that's why they're at number one, full of protein and they make the fish grow so quick. So I just do brine shrimp once a day and then obviously I supplement, but these were the seven best things to feed your fry. These are all going to be hopefully helpful to you guys and I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys in the next video.